What's up? That was terrible. Let's try that again. Better posture. <laughs> hey guys, Don with Driving Everest here, and today we're tackling a bumper install. This is the Quadratech QRC full width bumper for the Jeep Gladiator, and we're gonna get rid of this stock plastic one, throw on some serious hardware, because next we're gonna be adding a winch to this. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's see what we've got in here. Giant styrofoam block. Nothing inside it. It is just to keep this thing protected. And everything looks, looks in great shape. You know, that's one of the big concerns when you're getting something big and heavy like this shipped is, is it gonna get busted up? Is it gonna get marked up? If it gets marked up, we're gonna have the powder coating. It's gonna get scratched. It could start to rust, but I'll tell you what, it's bubble wrapped, it's styrofoamed. The box is in good condition. Found the hardware. And as always, Quadratech has given us full color instructions on how to put this thing on. It's gonna be a snap. The first thing we have to do is remove the splash guard. And since we're gonna be working on the ground a lot, we're gonna bust out our trail mat from Invictus Off-Road. That's something to lay on instead of the hot papers. Perfect. Now to get these plastic rivets out. This sure would be easier if her Jeep was lifted. <laughs> In due time, I guess. All right, they do not make these easy to get to. Let's see. Okay, that seemed to work all right. As long as you don't drop them in your face. Okay, so now that the rivets are out, there's two screws. Actually, I don't think I need this on there. And you need a 5 16 socket, and they'll come right out, and then the splash guard is off. One, you can already see it's starting to come. Two. All right, next with the disassembly is this accessory cross piece here. That's gonna take a 16 millimeter. So Quadratech lets you know in the instructions you're not gonna be reusing these. So I'm just gonna to toss them in the box. And we'll just throw them away when the project's over. And the bumper here and over on the other side We've got a couple of these plastic rivets. I'm just gonna work this up and out. Now those retainers are out, I'm gonna climb back underneath with an 18 millimeter deep socket to remove some more bolts. All right, there's not a lot of space under here, but right there, And right here on the other side are those retaining bolts we gotta get to. All right, so there's no room to get an impact here in the middle, but for the two on the outside, we can actually use the impact. All right, so we've got all the bolts out. We've disconnected the wiring harness for the fog lights. And now the bumper, in theory, should come right off. Let's see if we can figure out why this side doesn't come. There you go, just gotta pull it off straight. Bumper's off. So we're not quite done with this yet. You see, we've actually gotta get the fog lights out of here. 
so we can use those in our new bumper. So we're gonna go around the painstaking slow process of popping rivets. It's not just enough to get the lights out. We actually need this wiring harness inside here. So we've got to remove this center metal piece. You know, getting this wiring harness for the fog lights is probably more complicated and taking the other bumper off and installing a new one. So just be prepared to put in a bit of work if you need the fog lights. Now, if you have a different style bumper that you're not reusing the factory fog lights, you can just leave it in there. All that work just for this harness. That's crazy. Okay, so pay attention here. This part's important. Now, this Gladiator is a sport. The instructions say that you don't need these brackets for the fog lights unless you have a Rubicon or Sahara. Well, for the Gladiator, you do. So this bumper's actually got a JL stamped on it because it can be used for both is gonna be my guess. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we do put these brackets in so the fog lights seat properly. And there's really not a good way to show you what I'm doing here. It's pretty straightforward though. All right, so this is where it becomes a two-person install. And you wanna have a friend help you line this up and get this into place. How are we looking over there? Okay, well, you gotta come back out so I can get lined up too. What? All right, so they're gonna go on these inside holes and you see those on the passenger side are perfectly round. And these, these aren't. They're not lining up perfectly. So we're gonna have to fix that before the bumper can slide on. I'm gonna try to loosen this bracket behind here and see if we can adjust it. There we go. Let's see if that did the trick, you ready? Good. Good? Perfect. All right, that's on. Just gotta tighten it down. Thanks, dude. It's really low light here, and hopefully you can see. So, but this is where the bolts are supposed to go. There's just no way to get to the backside to actually put these and the hardware on. So we're gonna have to stop and figure that part out. All right, so let's take a break and talk for just a minute now. One thing that I do want to call out is the QRC front bumper is for both the JL and the JT. Now, there are going to be some differences in how these go on, and I think that's what's causing some of the discrepancies between the instructions and what we're actually finding out we have to do. So, for example, the, uh, the 16 millimeter bolts that are going through, there's a total of four of those. Those actually don't need the nut and the washer on the backside because they're actually threaded into the bumper itself and they're biting, they're grabbing, they're holding. It's just getting it to line up has been a bit of a challenge. After that, we're in the home stretch and it looks pretty straightforward. So after a little A&W root beer refreshment, it's time to get back to it. So if we're having some trouble getting any of the bolts to align right here on the inside and on the outside you've got a 16 millimeter bolt 
that holds a bracket onto the frame. Found out that if you loosen this up, you're able to line the bolts up easier, everything goes in nice and smooth. So all that's left right now is to make sure that we get the fog light wiring harness ran through the inside of the bumper, connected here, and then connected down on the other end, and that's a wrap. And it's gonna be so much easier than the factory bumper, which like has everything clamshelled around it, because the inside of this Quadratec bumper is still kind of exposed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's a little hard to get the camera lined up underneath here, but right here, we've got the factory harness. Up here is the one fog light. And then everything runs down around through the bumper and is zip tied into place. So we can see right here, there's a couple of cutouts. The wire goes behind these, it zip ties onto this and goes over and connects on the far side. All right, now with any project where we're doing lighting, wiring, we wanna make sure that everything works. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's see. Boom, we got one, we got two. Now, the only downside is these are halogen fog lights and with the LED headlights, they aren't that good looking. So I think that's gonna be upgraded in the near future. It's time to call this a wrap. Well, that's gonna do it. The bumper's on, it's super sturdy, the fog lights are good. I think, I think we're just ready to add the winch, which we've got the recessed plate here for. We need to add the six inch slim LEDs to the front. It's gonna give it that nice Baja look to it. Get a pair of shackles on there, but this thing, Gonna be happier so as always if you have any questions maybe you're having some challenges with your own install drop me a comment down below let me know we'll try to figure it out together and get you back on the trail otherwise we'll catch you on the next adventure